going on, everybody? It is Friday, May 25th, as I peek around my microphone. Uh, and we got through this awful, awful Thursday slate, and now we're on to like one of the best slates of the year. Tons of good pitching, uh, 14 games, no sign of weather whatsoever. I think I read that like all but two of these games are indoors, so... Uh, the two games that are outdoors apparently don't have any weather issues. I could have been reading something for yesterday. I don't know. I wasn't paying that much attention. But it seemed it seemed right, and it seemed to jive with what I saw. So I'm just going to continue to spout that off. Uh, Jake, how did your short slate go? I was okay. I got a lineup in. So I, like you, I forgot. <laughs> I was on the live stream and just, like, had my lineup made on DraftKings and didn't enter it into anything. Like, just yeah. completely, I, I must have been talking about something and, just forgot. So I made one on FanDuel, and it was going well. I had Snell in it. Uh, I think he was the high-scoring pitcher. Uh, got the win, I think. And then the Brewer stack just let me down. So I think I fell out of the cash. I actually didn't end up checking, but just played really light. Had to get a lineup in there. And Snell was the highlight of my night, and then there wasn't much hitting after that. What about you? Uh... Break even on DK, break even on FanDuel. It was, there you go. but I was down for the morning, so that was kind of a bummer. Uh, yeah, I was on the phone with my dad at like five until like I don't know quarter to six. I sat down and started updating everything. It was probably like six oh five, and I tried to load my CSV and it was just failing. And I was like, uh, maybe I selected the wrong games. Sometimes like you can't paste it in if you have like an earlier game mm -hmm. in your crunch so i was like okay i fixed that did it again nothing i was like <laughs> all right i'll re-download the template file and load it back in nothing and i was like why is this not working like what is going on here and i went over to my upcoming lines and i was like why why is there nothing in the upcoming section i was like did i not enter these tournaments then well then why is it giving me a template and i was like oh shit because this started 15 minutes ago not so did you you there. had a bunch of lineups in there already? yeah so i had whatever crunch i put in earlier in the day with like real lineups so ultimately it didn't hurt me all that okay. bad and like i paid attention to make sure that i had i didn't have any duds for the games that hadn't started yet but i mean it would have looked different it didn't have any of like the line changes or like even batting order shuffle or anything like that so I can't complain yeah. too much. It could have been way worse. It's only one game's worth of guys that could have potentially got scratched, but, you know, it's still kind of annoying. No, for sure. Um, I've heard some horror stories about guys who, you know, you just enter in 150 times or whatever, and you put in a dummy lineup, and there's four guys that aren't going to play, and I then they it try on to... a live stream before oh, really? I started at Awesome. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I, yeah, had, I maxed some tourney on DK NBA and was loading it up and fumbled on like getting my CSV ready and lineups locked and I had I had like bad lineup placeholders oh, in no. all like I just flipped the salary in reverse when I was loading it in and just put max lines of like all the minimum salary guys <laughs> so I just I burned the money immediately. That sucks. And like yes. everyone watched it happen as I was doing it, and we were like freaking out because I they were seeing that I wasn't gonna get anything in in time. Like I couldn't even get to one line to copy it over and just hope for the best. Uh, I just completely ran out of time. <laughs> Man, that it, sucked. It was brutal. Anyway, enough about me being a moron. We've got too many games to talk about, so let's get into it right now. First one's a big one uh, from a run perspective. Angels and Yankees. Angels 3.6 run <clears throat> implied total. Yankees 5.3. It's a 67% chance to win for the Yanks. Andrew Heaney going for uh, the Angels. Luis Severino going for the Yankees. I right now have zero Angels, whether that's hitting or Heaney. And I don't really have all that much Yankees. And I that concerns me like a lot. But I do have a ton of Severino, and I think that I'll have I'll end up with quite a bit of Severino moving forward. Three point six run implied total is hard to walk away from. Yeah, I mean I, I don't have any Angels on my radar against Severino. Just someone I have too much respect for to target on a huge slate. 
Um, I, I understand playing Severino here against a righty-heavy Angels lineup. He's not my favorite pitcher. There's a couple guys cheaper that I like than him, and then Scherzer, obviously, way up at the top. But I get the Severino play. He's not going to be someone I target heavily. The Really, the only bats that I like are the big guys from the Yankees. 2-3-4, Judge, Stan, Sanchez. That's about all the exposure I would have in this game. So I don't know if those are the same guys that you're on. I'm assuming they are, but... Uh, I barely got any bats? of them. That's the weirdest thing here. I, I can't really wrap my... I guess it's probably a price thing and sort of the way that the Yankees are set up from a stack perspective. They've got a lot of like the same stuff. Two first baseman options, three outfielders that sort of just like cover all of the bases. Uh, you know, Gary Sanchez is obviously like a nice option, but it gets into like a really expensive stack once you have Sanchez, Stanton, and Judge. It does. It just doesn't fit as cleanly as it should. Is my guess of why this isn't popping up as much. Like I only got six yeah. percent Stanton. Uh, I can't imagine. Like I would expect the Yankees big guns to be pretty heavily owned here i think they'll be somewhat owned but i mean he needs a good pitcher he dominated the astros which is a righty heavy lineup with a bunch of power too uh that was a couple starts ago like i could see him pitching pretty well here in yankee stadium dangerous spot i don't think that i'll end up with heaney but it, it's enough for me to not be heavily on the yankees and i think there are a bunch of other expensive bats that i prefer over the Yankees, uh, specifically Coors Field. Yeah, it's enough. This is one where uh, I'm I'm super torn. Like I look at the implied total, five point three, and that obviously jumps out. It's first, second, <clears throat> third highest, maybe fourth highest, depending on what the Rangers line ends up at. So that looks great. Uh, huge implied win total. Yankees against lefties slugging 484, well above league average. Mm -hmm. Weighted runs created plus 122, like well above league average. ISO 226. So I see all of that and I assume, oh, I'm going to have a bunch of Yankees. And then I end up with no Aaron Judge on FanDuel, 2% Judge on DK, 6% Stan, only 5% Gary Sanchez on DraftKings. And I don't know if it's... The, like that's the way that I should be looking at it and this is just a math problem and that's the way that it got solved or if I need to force in a little bit more Yankees because of their ceiling and it's probably a little bit of both but this one has me like super confused and it's crazy that it's still, like the first one that we're going to talk about because obviously Judge Stanton and Sanchez on paper are like what three of the top ten plays of the day um just, independent of everything else i think yeah at their position they're definitely near the top just um individually but i just don't think he's gonna get lit up like i've thought that a couple times and he's been really good gives up some hard contact to righties but that's expected 350 xfip against against them 27 percent k rate he can definitely make those guys miss um so i think take one or two of them i don't know if you need to take all three that's a lot of salary, especially when you want to pay up for pitching. But uh, that's probably the extent of my Yankees exposure. Yeah, I'm going to be like significantly underweight, I would imagine. Or uh, like it, this just ends up being like the right thought process. How's the Angels bullpen? Uh, eh. Wasn't that really good last year? Uh, they're, they're 12th in XFIP. So, okay. you know, nothing... Nothing crazy. I was going to say, like, maybe maybe I need to think about, like, Heaney being the good option here, and then it was just that the Angels' bullpen has been a dumpster fire, and that's where, like, more of the run total is coming from. But now this is relatively neutral. So, mm -hmm. yeah, right now I'm passing on everything for the Angels. I'll have Severino on DK quite a bit. Uh, I won't get to him all that much on FanDuel unless ownership projections look kind of weird and he becomes a pivot point. Yeah. But, on paper, the first four guys of the Yankees look great. Uh, you, you'll be hard-pressed. You, you won't find anybody that disagrees with that. Um, but other than that, I'd, other than that, like they're not a popular stack for me. I mean, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're my tenth most owned stack. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm. They're fine. I don't have a strong opinion either way. It's if if they're going to be low owned, I'm more interested. But I, I don't think they're going to be low owned, so I'd rather shift most of my exposure elsewhere. That's. I think that's where I'll end up landing. Um, their ownership will be the one that I pay attention to the most from a hitting perspective. Mm. All right. Blue Jays and Phillies. Blue Jays 4.4 run implied total. Phillies 4.9. It's a 54% chance to win for the Phillies. Sam Gaviglio going for Toronto. Zach Eflin going for Philadelphia. Uh, I won't have either of these pitchers, although I did get apparently one line of Gaviglio. Uh, That's usually just based on the randomization. So, Only thing that I'm looking at here, and again, this is another thing that's blowing my mind. (coughs) Only thing I'm looking at here are Blue Jays bats. No Phillies bats. Yeah, I think Gaviglio is okay. Um, just an okay pitcher. I <clears throat> I don't expect him to like run through these Phillies by any means. But and I can see taking a chance on Gaviglio for five thousand if you want to get in Scherzer or or Syndergaard or Severino um, as a SP two. I mean, I'm not crazy about him. I like a guy that's even cheaper than him, but I think he's okay. I'm not looking to target the Phillies heavily besides Carlos Santana, who's just too cheap. 3,900 against a righty. Um, and then Odubel Herrera has just been in fuego. So uh, that's about it for this game. I mean, you don't, you don't like Eflin, do you? No, zero Eflin. Yeah, and... I I mean, I don't really want to target against Eflin either. So this game is going to be pretty light for exposure for me. Yeah, Blue Jays are my seventh most owned stack. And it, it's kind of crazy to me because I had none of them, I think it was two nights ago, on a night where they were supposed to be relatively chalky. And that w- was really weird to me. And now they're popping up on a 14-game slate with mm-hmm. the lower run total. And it's just... I think it's just a price point thing, like Granderson leading off, only 2800 on FanDuel. I think that's a nice price. Donaldson's 4300 but, you know, he's just good in general. Um, Smoke and Hernandez are both in the mid-threes. I, I don't know. Uh, looks like I'm going to end up with probably a little bit of the Blue Jays. Um, I don't expect anybody to really be on them. <coughs> but still, they're only seventh in my stack so they're not going to make or break anything i mean they could make something for sure uh, but they're not going to break me if it goes wrong yeah and no pitching so i think we can move on yep i'm ready cardinals and pirates uh cardinals 4.4 run implied total pirates 4.6 it's a 53 percent chance to win for the cardinals nope for the pirates (laughs) john gant going for st louis joe musgrove going for pittsburgh uh, I'll probably end up with like a little bit of both of these guys on DK to go with Scherzer or even Paxton, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be going crazy. I don't expect fireworks out of Gant or Musgrove, but I think there are decent options at their price point. Yeah, I'm I'm off of Gant. He worries me a little bit. Um, not that Musgrove doesn't, but Musgrove is 4,000 favored. Um, the total is not huge. It's, it's, I mean, it's nine. It's moved up since last night. Um, but I think Musgrove could be okay here. He's <clears throat> He's been really inconsistent in the minors. I started at the A, AA, and AAA levels. One good start in AAA, one really bad one. Um but he faced 27 batters in, in his last start, so I think he's going to be close to fully stretched out. And if that's the case, just 4,000, if he can get you five or maybe six innings with a few strikeouts, you're thrilled for 4,000. Um, I mean, the the Cardinals aren't a great matchup for anyone, really, but I think he can just be okay. And for 4,000, I'll gladly take some shots at, at Musgrove who he was a good pitcher last year yeah. um for the Astros like he was fine 11 percent swinging strike rate near 25 percent wisp for swing those are both solid numbers so I'm on Musgrove here and that's about it 
Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'll have bits of both of these guys. I'll probably total up whatever I get on my final crunch of ownership and split it between the two. Um, just because I don't really, I don't have too much of a preference of either guy. And then bats wise, uh, just a couple lines of Cardinals. But ultimately, I don't. I'm not really looking at this game for hitting. They're they're both uh, barely owned for me. Oh, I actually I like the Pirate bats uh, a little bit. I said okay. that's about it. But um, so Gant's giving up a ton of hard contact to lefties. He's got a 5.30 Woba against them. And then the Pirates are just lefty heavy. They've got Polanco and Bell, Dickerson, Moran, Austin Meadows. So I like all the lefties here and Cervelli. Um, and I'm hoping the Pirates can give Musgrove some run support and he can cruise to a few easy innings. Uh, so I'll have a Pirate stack or two for sure. Uh, just 58% hard contact against lefties. Even in a short sample, that's that's pretty alarming for John Gant. Yeah, that's that's high. Pirates are my 14th most owned stack. <laughs> so not too much here. Um, one or two lines at best. I just don't see it. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's the runs or what. I have a lot of respect for Gant and Musgrove. Probably more than I should. Uh, Astros and Indians. Astros 3.5 run in that cannot be right. Oh, Kluber's pitching. At 3.5 run implied total, Indians 4.2. It's a 58% chance to win for the Indians. Dallas Keuchel going for Houston. Corey Kluber going for Cleveland. Uh, I'll end up with a solid amount of Kluber. Um, I don't love it. Obviously, the Astros are quite good. So this game actually just scares me. Uh, a little bit of Kluber is what I'll have. I don't really like any of the bats. Yeah, I'm kind of off this game as well. Kluber hasn't been as great as he was last year, but he he does have a couple things going for him. Um, Houston has a bunch of righties, and then he just threw a really good game against them last week. Seven innings, 10 Ks. Um, Houston's probably a below average matchup, but four righties up at the top. Kluber is very, very good against righties. Um, the whiffs and the swinging strikes are down. So, I mean, overall, I'm a little concerned about Kluber, but I could see going to him here. I think he's going to be pretty low-owned, and it's a really good price, 10-8 for him. So probably a good pivot to Syndergaard if he's going to be the chalk. Yeah, I would much prefer Syndergaard in this situation, but I think his ownership will be quite high. Yeah. Kluber's the second most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. $1,000 behind uh, Scherzer. I'm going to have a lot of trouble getting to Kluber unless we see, like, weirdly low ownership where I would want to take a look at him a little bit closer. But I figure he'll be relatively highly owned on FanDuel. And I'll you probably think? be... I mean, I don't, you know, not like... There's a lot of options today, so it's not going to be anything crazy. But he's going to have enough ownership that I'll be probably under the field with okay. some ease. I'm just looking at like season stats. He's given up 11 home runs this year, which really? is kind of amazing. Uh, dude, did he even give up 11 last year? That's fine. Like, that seems that seems ridiculously high. He gave up 21 last year. Wow. Okay. So I was way off on that. Gave up 22 still, the year before that and 22 the year before that. Wow. I didn't know he gave up that many home runs. I just think of him just mowing down everyone. But that's interesting. Um, he's still on pace for, what are we, a third of the way through the season? Like, Yeah. What do that's they uh, See, what that's do quite they the pace he's on. They're pretty. Uh, Fangraphs, steamers and or steamer and zips have them projected for. Let's see, zips has fourteen more, steamer has eighteen more. Let's call it sixteen. So that'd put him at like twenty seven. So that's, you know, he's giving them up at a bit of a healthy rate right now. Yeah, yeah. I I can't get to any bats here. There's too much good pitching. Yeah, I mean the bats that I want to play are. Lindor and Ramirez, but 5,300 and 5,100 against 
Keichel, who I have some respect for as far as limiting hard hits and uh, uh, just having decent stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm off bats here, too. This one is kind of a wash outside of maybe some Kluber exposure. Um, with you. <clears throat> Braves and Red Sox. Here's a series I don't want. Uh, My Braves. Braves 4.3 run implied total. Red Sox 5.7. It's a 64% chance to win for the Red Sox. Oh, Julio. Just don't, don't play him. He's going to get bombed. Eduardo Rodriguez for the Red Sox, however, looking like a really nice option. Um, I like I love the Red Sox here, whether that's Bats or, Rod, or Rodriguez. Uh, I will have both uh, very plentifully. Uh, let's see, Red Sox are my third most owned stack on FanDuel, my second most owned stack on DraftKings. Uh, I have exposure to Rodriguez on FanDuel and DK. Uh, this is just going to be very much Red Sox all around. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's fair. I think that just a huge, huge run total. Um, Rodriguez has been pretty good for the most part this year. Um I don't. I'm not in love with the Red Sox stack. Like if they're gonna be mega chalk because they got a six total. Um, like I much much prefer Coors over, well the Rockies over the Red Sox. So if they're gonna be close in ownership, I'll just go to Coors Field. Uh, Tehran is pretty decent against righties, but the Red Sox just smoke righties all year. Highest WRC plus and all that. And then it's good hitting weather. Uh, that's reflected in the total. Um, so, I mean, the top five are really where I'm going if I'm going to the Red Sox. And then you don't like – so you like Erod. You don't like any Braves bats, right? Um, so I do get to some Braves stacks on DK. They are my yeah. eighth most owned stack right now. So Albies, Acuna, Freeman. Um, I got a little bit of Flowers and Suzuki since right now they're I guess they're projecting to DH one of their other catchers, which so they're probably going to catch Flowers DH Suzuki. Is that right? DH Freeman and play one of those clowns at first. I don't know how much exposure either one could of be. them have to first base. Uh, I could see them giving Freeman a day off from the field, but Freeman's, uh, if I remember correctly, like a really good defensive first baseman too. So. Maybe that wouldn't happen. Um, I can't. Im- I can't imagine why you would ever want to DH your other catcher. Well, I mean, you cannot. You can't not have Suzuki in the lineup against a lefty, and then Flowers is smoking lefties this year too. So yeah, I, I guess it's it's like the Gaddis McCann thing. I'm guessing. Yeah, but Gaddis is an actual hitter. Yeah, true. Suzuki, dude, he has been since like last year, like one of the best hitters in the MLB against lefties. And he sucked with the Twins. I remember everyone used to complain about him. Like, all my Twins fan friends. Um, Do you mean all of the Twins fans you have at your Twins blog? Yeah. Yeah. The rest of the, the members of your Twins website that you run? Yeah. I'm not on the Twins tonight, so... You can't call me a homer tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, uh, if you show some patience uh, when we get to the Twins game, I will absolutely call you a homer. <laughs> Uh, I've got so Red Sox for me. Uh, first five. Um, okay, th- there's got to be a bug in the way this is getting totaled up because this is saying that I've got zero Pedroia on either site, but there's no way that's possible. Mm, I mean, if you like the stack that much, I'm sure he's going to sneak in there somehow. So probably. Uh, I want to talk about the Braves quick. I don't mind targeting against Erod, especially if the Braves are going to be under-owned against the lefty. They still get that great hitting weather, wind blowing out 75 degrees, and they've just got some lefty mashers, Albies, Acuna. Uh, Freddie Freeman can hit lefties, as we know. And then if Flowers and or Suzuki are in, I like them both on DK. So I like the Braves as a contrarian stack, maybe... Erod gets a little bit too highly owned, and then it becomes a good leverage stack. Yeah, uh, I don't have a huge problem with the Braves. Okay, what the fuck is this? Why are these guys getting weird-ass projections? Got a bug. I 
think the bug is in Fantasy Cruncher, not me. Oh no! Don't be bashing Fantasy Cruncher. Come on. I don't. That's not your brand. Pe- I don't think they have Pedroia in the player pool. Yeah, they don't. Mm. That's why you came up as a zero. Okay. And for like, I have him. But when you paste in guys that they don't have in the player pool, they don't show up. And now it's showing all these guys with my randomization setting as their projection. So, you know, that's great as well. Man. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to matter all that much, but I will have a ton of Pedroia as well as part of this stack. The Red Sox will be quite popular. Fantasy Cruncher, get that refreshed. Also, I want access to the beta, but I'm not going to use the Fantasy Cruncher logo as my icon on FanDuel or DraftKings. Just don't think that I can pull that off right now, given my current employment. Is that the is that what they're asking? Yeah, they uh, sent out an email for the beta of some additional features for Fantasy Cruncher, and uh, to activate that, you would switch your icon to the Fantasy Cruncher logo on the websites and send a screenshot. I can't do that. So, uh, Dave, if you happen to be listening to this, I assume you understand that I can't do that, but I would, I'm one of your key demographic and I will happily point out any issues. You want, there you, me, go. you want me in the beta. I promise. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Red Sox will be my most popular non-core stack. That's the best I can do right now. Yeah. I, I don't mind that. I mean, I'm, I don't want to act like I'm not on the Red Sox because I think they're a really good stack here. Just worried about their ownership as the day goes on. I get it. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at the Nats. Let's get our uh, Scherzer talk out of the way. Nats, 4.2 run implied total. Marlins, <clears throat> 2.5. chance to win for the Nats. Max Scherzer going for Washington. Jose Urena going for Miami. Scherzer's the most expensive pitcher on the board. Um, 12K on FanDuel, 14,000 on DraftKings. Uh, I'll have a bunch of him. Um, I expect him to be the most popular pitcher of the day uh, just because of who he is and the matchup and his just ridiculous upside. He can he can break the slate even at that price, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's all, it's all Scherzer for me. Yeah, it's just... Really good matchup. He's like the Marlins are bottom five in WRC plus on base percentage, ISO, all that. They strike out twenty four percent of the time against righties. It's just it's too good of a matchup for him. Like if he doesn't get double digit strikeouts here, I would be pretty surprised and go like seven innings. Um, Speaking of, what do I have him in there for? You're you're gonna have to sacrifice some bats with him, and that's kind of why I like Musgrove because you don't really have to, and Gaviglio a little bit. Um, some of these guys allow you to fit in Scherzer and a ton of really good bats, so there's enough value on the slate. I think that you can justify paying fourteen thousand for a pitcher. Where on some slates, I would just be completely <laughs> turned off by that. But this is one where he could get forty. 45, 50 DraftKings points, and I don't think any other pitcher can really do that tonight. I completely agree. I've got it projected for 9.1 Ks. So, you know. I'd bump that up if I were you. But. Well, you know, just a, just an average. It, that factors in, you know, him getting bombed and stuff. If You know, sure. it could happen. Uh, yeah. It just means that, like, 12 and 13 are very close. Like, they're inside of his like standard deviation of K's it's uh oh yeah he can get into like pretty high double digit numbers quickly when you can average nine nine is a healthy number oh yeah for a projection that's <laughs> yeah that is healthy yeah it, we, you don't we won't see too many higher than that i would guess um do they have a, a k prop out on him yet let's see I mean, it's really hard to get double-digit Ks, so... Yeah, no, they only have got run props out right now. Uh, what do you think about Nats bats? Because I've got quite a bit. Yeah, I like the lefties. Do you have Juan Soto in the two-hole? I do. I like that a lot. Soto, Harper, 
Uh, Matt Adams, I just really like targeting lefties against Urena. He's got a really tough time with them. Um, and then I don't mind Rendon, who's jammed in the middle of all those lefties, if that's going to be their lineup. He's just a good hitter, and he's 4,000. So two through five stack for the Nats, I really, really like. I'm even wider than that. I have, but I like Trey Turner <clears throat> usually a lot more than you do. Yeah. Um, he's another another scenario where I'm getting quite a bit of Turner. And then uh, Severino at catcher, you know, if I'm stacking up DK on DraftKings, then I'm perfectly fine having Severino as well as part of it all. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to, like, Turner's just 4,800, so uh, I don't really like him as a one-off, but in the context of a stack, I don't mind that, actually. Uh, I just kind of looked over him. I was really focused on Soto, maybe. 3,400 for Soto is nice. With a big slate like this, where I know that I'm going to have two stacks essentially in every lineup, um, it means that I'm not going to get to like one off cheaper or short stops. So it's going to bring Turner along regularly. And, you know, he's a shortstop that actually does hit. He's not, he's not a like glove for short, shortstop or anything. 110 yeah. weighted runs created plus for a shortstop is really good. Um, so and yeah, you can steal on Urena. Yeah, you can steal on Urena too. So. Yeah. Yeah, hard to get away from Scherzer tonight. Um, I mean, if anybody thinks it's a bad matchup or something, uh, those people are crazy. No, it's not. It's a really good matchup. You, I mean, some people just won't pay that price for pitching, and I understand that. But if you're making a bunch of lineups, I would get some Scherzer exposure just because he's very. He's got a really good chance to be the highest scoring raw pitcher or highest raw point pitcher. Good God. Fantasy country, you're so slow right now. I'm not even trying to do anything. I'm just trying to look at information to see if FanDuel's jacked up like DK is, which apparently it's not. But, again, no Pedroia. Just confirming. Orioles and Rays. Orioles, 3.9 run implied total. Rays, 4.6. Wow, that's how bad David Hess is. Um, Rays, 58% chance to win. David Hess going for the Orioles. Sergio Romo going for the Rays. Uh, you're not playing Hess because of that implied total and the fact that he's David Hess. And you're not playing Sergio Romo because he's a reliever and he's probably going to throw at most three innings. So uh, this game's only hitting uh, the Rays in particular. A uh, pretty popular stack for me on FanDuel. They are fourth in my total ownership right now. And uh, that's mostly just because it's a 4.6 run implied total against a crap pitcher, and they have no pricing whatsoever. Uh, CJ Krohn, only 3,400. Everybody else at the top of their order. Spawn, 2,700. Joey Wendell, 2,400. Wilson Ramos, 2,400. Brad Miller, 2,300. Uh, Malik Smith, 2,200. Like, granted, all of these guys suck. But uh, I'm gonna they'll they'll be like my low owned stack. I would guess that I'll have Rays plus Scherzer plus X in the spots that I have the Rays pretty regularly. Yeah, and that, they might be a way to get Scherzer and Coors in. I'm just like looking at the pricing with some of those guys, Wendell and Ramos and uh, Brad Miller. I think if I had to choose one, it would be Brad Miller. Hell yeah, just because of the price. But I. Dude, playing Brad Miller as your first base spot on a 14-game slate is mm. that uh, that takes a different type of person. So um, that's sort of a mental block for me, Brad Miller. I've got 12% Brad Miller on wow. FanDuel right now. You will be way way over the field. So yeah, um, this is this is a pretty uninteresting game for me. I like Machado just because I think Yarbrough is coming in after Romo, right? That's the plan. Uh, I didn't look at anything after that. Okay, well, if it is Yarbrough, he's a lefty, and then I really like Machado, but not really on the Baltimore bats. Um, I got no Baltimore. Yeah, like, Rays are fine, but I won't, I don't know if I'll end up with any Rays. I'll, I'll try to avoid ending up with any Rays, but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. This game kind of sucks. Yeah, I would have, uh, I would have assumed the Rays were dog shit yesterday, and then they went ahead and put up uh, six and took the victory against Porcello. So, 
I told you. I said, doesn't it seem like one of these expensive pitchers in a good matchup always gets blown up and then the stack wins it against him on the short slate? And sure enough, the Braves, I think they scored the most runs on the night. Uh, Maybe the Royals did, actually. Uh, That's how... So the Rays were what tipped me off yesterday to my DK uh, crunch conundrum after 6 o'clock because I had none of him or none of the Rays. They were the only stack that I didn't have anybody of on DraftKings. And I was like, okay, you know, we're projecting our owner, their ownership at like, it was like 45% total. I was like, I'm going to do 142 lines without the raise. And then I'll force in eight specific lines that had the raise in. So I was just trying to make sure that even if I was under the field, I had a couple spots in case it blew up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when I was just like, this shit just won't work. And I was like, oh yeah, because then, you know, this shit's over already. <laughs> um yeah, yeah. Brad Miller for me would be the the play from the Rays. Twenty three hundred on Fanduel is nuts for him. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. All right. White Sox and Tigers. White Sox four point four run implied total. Tigers four point six. It's a fifty one percent chance to win for the Tigers. Uh, Ronaldo Lopez going for Chicago. Mike Fires going for Detroit. Uh, neither guy. No pitching here for me, and just like a little bit of bats. Um, this game is is I don't know, not much interesting here. Yeah, no pitching for me either. Some White Sox bats I like, um, specifically Moncada, Abreu. If Davidson's in the lineup, I like him as well. So I could get to a little bit of a White Sox mini stack. Even Palka for thirty six hundred, I like. Um, Fires just can't really make anyone miss, and then he gives up a bunch of hard hits to lefties. So yeah, yeah. Uh, White Sox, just a mid tier stack for me. Nothing crazy. Yeah, they're my fifth and sixth most owned stacks. So on DK at least. Uh, you, you like the Tigers too? Yeah, Tigers slightly ahead of the White Sox. I mean, it's hmm. like you know, it's barely anything. But um, so like. Martin, Castellanos, V-Mart, they're the guys that I'm getting the most. And then I do like Moncada, Sanchez, Abreu. It's just a little bit of both of these teams. Like, I, I see both. Either team can kind of pop off here. Um, there's not really any pitching to be found, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm much more on the White Sox side just because I think they have some better hitters than the Tigers. Like, there won't be any ownership in this game, so. I, I doubt it. I'll take whatever I get here. Yeah. Royals and Rangers. Royals, 4.3 run implied total. Rangers, 5.2. It's a 58% chance to win for the Rangers. Eric Scoglin going for Kansas City. Mike Miner going for Texas. Uh, I got a ton of Miner. So tell me I'm stupid. Um, Miner's going to be in the I, same boat as Gantz <clears throat> and Musgrove for me. So whatever I get in that total of those clowns is just going to get spread back out. Yeah, I like <laughs> I like Musgrove a lot more. I won't end up on any Miner, I don't think. I'm worried about a couple bats in the Royals lineup. Solaire, uh, Merrifield. Those two guys both have like 50% hard hit rate against lefties this year. Um, so Lair and Merrifield just crushing the lefties. And then Salvador Perez in the four spot. Um, I don't know about Hunter Dozier. I don't know how well he hits lefties, but just another righty bat in there for Minor. Pretty and well. then the Royals, yeah, the Royals just don't really strike out that much. So I will be off of Minor. It's awesome hitting weather. Uh, 93 degrees, cool. like in Texas. It's just, um, yeah, no minor for me, no Scoglin. I like bats on both sides. I'm really, really missing Beltre and Andrews here. So are if they. those guys, yeah, dude, if those guys were in the lineup, I would be all over the Rangers. It's just hard now. Like, who are you going to target? Kiner, Falefa, Profar is fine for me, and then Chirinos, but he's not even batting anywhere near the top of the order. So yeah. I like the Rangers. Um, more just picking and choosing the few guys that I mentioned, and then really, really love Solaire, Merrifield, and Perez. Those guys are one of my favorite trios on the night. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I get a little bit of the Royals. Um, not too much. Rangers are my fifth most owned stack on FanDuel, seventh on DK. So a little bit more than most, but nothing crazy. Um, yeah, they just they're missing they're missing bats. No Beltre is really kind of a bummer. But 5.2 run implied total, I mean, that that's telling me something. It's the park. That's Scogland. That's whatever's left. So yeah. I'll take my chances a little bit on the Rangers. And like I said, on my last crunch, or my second to last crunch, I guess, whatever exposure I have to Gant, Miner, and Musgrove, we'll just get it added. So if it's like 40% total... Uh, you know, I'll spread that out 13, 13, 13 or something to all three guys and, and force that in there because I'm not really confident in any of them. They're all basically the same price point. So uh, I just want to rotate through them and hope one of them hits. Okay. Yeah, that's that's probably what I would do if I had 150 laps. I mean, I would be heavier on Musgrove, but sure. if Musgrove is going to be the chalkiest, I think, because he's the lowest price, he's a name that people know. Uh, he was decent last year and... Going, I mean, the total for the Cardinals is only four and a half, which isn't perfect, but um, it's a lot worse hitting weather than than Texas. Yeah, yeah, and like their ownerships will also determine a little bit more of that spread. If one of them was significantly higher than the other, then I would probably have that one less than others because, like, I like Musgrove, but if his ownership percent, like, what would you guess for his ownership? I mean, it's really tough to tell this far out from Locke, but he'll be, unless we see some hard pitch count or something, or we're just completely missing something, I think he'll be 15 to 20% just because okay. of that price. Like, if he's 15 and we're projecting Mike Miner at 2, I'll want to have more Mike Miner and less than 15% of Musgrove because I don't think that he's like a 15 to 1 option. I think that's Miner. fair. Yeah. You got to make uh, pivots like game. that in tournaments. Like, you, you know, because if the if the 15% guy bombs or the 20% guy bombs and you've got the other guy and he's just okay, you're so far ahead yeah. while having a similar lineup. So. Yeah, so if he was at 15, I'd probably end up with like 9 or 10 Musgrove and similar amounts of Gant and, and Miner. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Mets and Brewers. Mets 4.2 run implied total. Brewers 3.8. It's a 55% chance to win for the Mets. Noah Syndergaard going for New York. Junior Guerra going for Milwaukee. Uh, love Syndergaard here tonight, uh, particularly on DK. I think that he's probably the best like combination of talent and price point <clears throat> on DraftKings. So uh, I'll end up with a lot of Syndergaard. I would imagine he'll be relatively popular at that price point as well. I don't love him quite as much on FanDuel, um, but I'll still have him quite a bit. It wouldn't shock me if I was under the field there. I actually like Bats in this game more than I like uh, Syndergaard, at least on FanDuel. Yeah. Um, I, I love Syndergaard here. Everything checks out for me. Um, the thing I'm always worried about with Syndergaard is he lets a couple guys on base and... Now you're looking at a steal and a guy ends up on third base. And then you're obviously not going to pitch as well with players on base. Um, so that's always worrisome with Syndergaard. Uh, but it, like just the raw numbers, 14.6% swinging strike rate, 47.5% ground ball rate, like <clears throat> $3,500 discount on uh, Scherzer. Like he could match him point per dollar, I think, here more times than not. And I am worried about Kane and VR with the steals, but the strikeout should be here. Brewers are an above average strikeout matchup. So <clears throat> I'll take the discount. I'm going to have a bunch of Cindergard. I don't really see a way of getting around him here. He's going to be chalked, though. Yeah. Um, I got a little bit of Guerra on DK. I don't love it, but I'm not too worried about Mets bats. So I don't mind having. A couple flyer lineups on Guerra. I I don't mind Guerra. I just think that yeah, he's in an awkward price range. Like if he was down by Miner and down by Musgrove and all those guys, then I'd be a lot more interested. 
he is better against lefties. Yeah. Mets have a bunch of lefties. Um, well, that was a really obvious thing for me to say. Like, if he's twenty two thousand dollars cheaper, yeah, I'd like him better. Uh, so that's probably pretty dumb. But did you hear uh, that in my voice? <laughs> yeah, I, I realized that as I was saying it. Like, well, yeah, of course you'd like a guy if he's two thousand dollars cheaper. Everyone would. Um, hey, he'd be only the, popular at forty five hundred today. Only the best here at Osmo dot com. So I just don't think he's the craziest play. Uh, no one's going to play Guerra. No. Like, just no one's going to play him. And he is striking out lefties at a higher rate than righties. Like, 24, 25%, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then I don't have a ton of respect for the Mets. So I don't think he's a terrible play. I just don't really think I need to go there. Yeah, my, my problem is I'm going to have a ton of Mets bats. They're my second most owned stack on FanDuel right now. And my fourth most owned stack on DK. Um, and it's a, it's a price thing. So, like, Wilmer Flores is hitting third. He's 2,200 on FanDuel. Jay Bruce, 2,600. Uh, Conforto, only 3,200. Like, you just... I'm going to end up with an overwhelming amount of Mets on FanDuel. They're another stack where uh, they'll make a lot of sense with Scherzer. Um, yeah. I'll be running down basically the whole line of everything. Uh, nothing unique about the stack for it on DraftKings. It's kind of just like a muted version of everything I have on FanDuel. It's not like um, anybody stands out more because of a price difference or anything. So I like the Mets a lot. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that I do, but it's really just a price thing. Like, the total salary for the Mets lineup on FanDuel is $21,800. Um, and then the total salary for, like, the Red Sox is $33,000. A full, like, $11,800 more. So, I mean, it's like multi it's like adding extra people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really like Estrubal Cabrera for 3800 but um, I don't think I'll end up on many Mets here, despite their good prices on DraftKings. Interesting. Okay. I think Guerra, I mean, I think he's a, an all right play, just too expensive for me. So when that's the case, I'll just play him, quote unquote, by not stacking against him. I got you. I'm surprised. Five of six lefty bats to start. I figured that would be up your alley. Yeah, I mean, he's striking out lefties better than righties this year. And I think he did the same last year. So I don't know what his pitch arsenal is, but if he's got a good changeup or whatever, I can't remember what he throws, but uh, it would make sense. We talked about that already, but um, he's got fastball, slider, splitter. Oh, the splitter. That could be getting a lot of whiffs from lefties. I'll just look right now, actually. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean... He's getting some whiffs with the splitter for lefties, uh, some with the slider. I mean, nothing, nothing crazy, but looks like he's about even splits. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll, Mets will be one of my combined spotlight hitter stack articles now, which. I've determined is going to be the future of that. So if you saw it yesterday, get ready. It's going to look like that again. Um, oh, you're combining them? Yeah, because I would just talk about an individual hitter from some of my stacks in the hitter spot and then kind of talk about it again. And it was, I didn't really oh, think gotcha. about it like that until Chris mentioned it. And I was like, yeah, I should just, it should just be one big thing. We recommend stacking. So in theory, we would say that the stacking article is more important than three one-off hitters. And... If I'm doing that, then I'd rather just talk about uh, some of the hitters more in depth. Like, what would be a good example? On, like, nights that I've liked the Orioles. You know, like, I'll talk about Machado, but it's like, yeah, I like scope. I'll get just as much scope and Adam Jones as I will Machado. So, like, I always felt weird just picking one of them. So I'd rather just say, look, like, I like all three of these guys. I think they're all fine in whatever scenario and just take the Orioles. Okay. Yeah, when I do the stacks on Saturday and the spotlights, I just I'll do the stacks first, like pick out my my three favorite ones, write about those and then I just 
purposely take one off hitters from other games just to try not to repeat myself but oh, that's yeah, like i just i couldn't i kept felt feeling like i was repeating myself over and over again and yeah. i don't ever like i personally don't ever look at like a one-off hitter so i wasn't mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't i didn't feel right like recommending it like that so i don't know yeah that's understandable yeah it's just making shit up we'll see how much people like it and if they tell me to do it the other way then i'll do it the other way i don't care yeah i just want to do what everybody what i think is best for everybody else they'll let you know yeah oh for sure v vocal out out there of <laughs> when people don't like things yeah uh reds and rockies get ready for this one reds oh, 4.8 run implied total rockies 6.2 <clears throat> It's a 63% chance to win for the Rockies. 6.2 with so many runs. Sal Romano going for Cincinnati. John Gray going for Colorado. Hey, you'd be surprised to know that I like uh, I like the Rockies quite a bit here. Yeah, dude. I, I love the Rockies. Um, and, you know, I like the Rockies. I like the Rockies at Coors Field all the time. But seven total almost. Um Dude, I, I'd probably bet on the over because Sal Romano is, like, the worst Coors pitcher you could possibly have. Although he does have a slider. It is a slider that sucks, <laughs> like, not getting any whiffs or anything. But uh, it's like a dream come true. Sal Romano and Coors Field, huge slate. So, I mean, how high can these guys possibly be owned? Um, Carlos Gonzalez is going to be super popular, and Tony Walters will be. Walters is probably my favorite, or I'm sorry, my least favorite player on the Rockies. Just doesn't really have much power. <clears throat> but $2,700 catcher in Coors against Sal Romano. Yep. Like, <clears throat> I love all these Rockies one through nine. Like, there's just no way around it. Romano cannot miss any bats. The ball is going to be in play all the time. And I will have, if I make one lineup, it'll be a full Rocky stack. Yeah, uh, they're going to be super popular. <clears throat> I'd be surprised if I'm not <clears throat> underweight on the Rockies, and I'll be fine with that. There's just too much other stuff out there. Uh, but they're very clearly my number one stack, both sites. Um, it's hard to not recommend them because of that run total. So we're not telling anybody anything they don't already know here. On DK, I run the full line. Uh I had a 22% ownership cap on my first crunch. Uh, the only guys to not hit that were Blackman was 19, Walters was 21, and uh, Daniel Castro was 18. So, like, everybody's coming up in abundance. Uh, can't help it. Like, there's just... Offense is going to be at a premium here. I do get, like, one or two random lines with John Gray, and I'm okay with that. Uh, he's got good stuff, so I'll take a chance that the Reds just don't pop yeah. out of it. But no, I, I, I don't normally like targeting anyone pitching in cores. Uh, but I think Gray's price point is worth like a, hmm, maybe this game doesn't blow up type. Look. Yeah. I, I don't mind Gray for 7,400. He's He's got like one of the highest swinging strike rates over the last month, um, getting a bunch of chases and all that. And he can do it in cores. He's had really good games in cores. Yeah. Reds are an above average matchup. And 7,400, plus I love all the bats hitting for him. So I think he's going to have a ton of run support and could have a lot of very low-stress innings if he can keep the ball in the yard, which he should be able to do here. Um, so really the only hitter I like against Gray is Votto, but I'm not all that interested in a red stack. So it's, it's Rockies and maybe some Gray here. I'll have like two or three lines of Winker, Barnhart, Votto, and Scooter Jeanette. Yeah, if you're making 150, yeah, like a low owned stack in Coors Field is never a bad play. I mean, Crazy they'll, be, they'll be owned more than whatever I have them just because yeah. of Coors. Yeah, uh, I like that. But yeah, it's look, everybody's going to talk Rockies today, and they're either going to say the Rockies look awesome or you got to fade Coors. Uh, those are going to be the only two opinions that anyone will ever read. Um, and, uh, you know, the answer lies somewhat in the middle, probably. <laughs> Romano. Romano's awful. I... Romano makes me want to eat, like, a uh, New York-style slice and a uh, cheesesteak. We have a place he... called Sal's in college, so Sal Romano makes me think of buffalo chicken cheesesteaks. <laughs> I don't know. That's it. Let's... 
That's my that's my anecdote for Sal Romano. There you go. They're great cheesesteaks too. Only five bucks. Monstrous. Like the size of my coffee mug. It's great. <laughs> Diamond Making Madison. everyone hungry. Oh, what's up? You're making everyone hungry. Yeah, I would eat that right now. I, if I could get a Sal's cheesesteak, which I don't think Sal's is open anymore. R.I.P. Sal's. Uh, I would certainly get one right now, but it would take them uh, like roughly nine and a half hours to get that shit delivered to my house. Probably wouldn't be tasty any longer. <laughs> Diamondbacks and A's. Diamondbacks, 3.4 run implied total. A's, 4.1. It's a 57% chance to win for the A's. Pat Corbin going for Arizona. Uh, Shamanaya going for Oakland. I, I'm so surprised. Like, I feel like we didn't even talk about him before the show. And normally you are like, Pat Corbin's BFF. Uh, I like him. I like Manaya more. I'm surprised by that, but mm-hmm. 3.4 run implied total for the Diamondbacks. Their lineup is just rough, man. If you're going to have Nick Ahmed hitting in the two hole with a weighted runs created plus a 60, or Chris Owings at 69, Joe nice. Murphy 68, Socrates Brito got 62, Devin Marrero 44. This fucking team sucks. Yeah, really I bad. Wasn't, I wasn't ready for how bad the Diamondbacks were going to be when I read that off. That surprised me. When I looked last night, I saw like Descalso and Avila and Dyson in the lineup. Um, Much different. In the projected. And I mean, this one is about as good. Lamb can't hit lefties. Uh, it's just a really good lineup for Manaya to go up against. I prefer righties against the Diamondbacks, but. Um, and then Manaya's going through a little bit of a rough stretch, at least three earned runs in his last four starts, with a high of five strikeouts in that span. His stri- swinging strike rate's down. But if they throw out this garbage lineup against him, then he's got to at least be considered for 8,600. Um, Corbin, um, his velocity was down a little bit in his last start, so I'm worried about him. Mm. Worried about the A's matchup. I, I think he's fine. Um, but for 9,700, he's so closely priced to Syndergaard and Kluber that I will pass on Corbin um, a lot of hard hits to righties lately too, and got Lowry and Pinder and Chapman and Semyon who can all hit lefties really well. So no Corbin for me, I think for the first time this year. Um, yeah, it's a sad day. Uh, you're right about that velocity. Well, it, it dipped. Um, so it dipped like four starts ago. Yeah. Like so I've huge, got it here. Uh, he was in yeah. like basically 93 range till the end of April. And then he came out in that Dodgers start 89.8 mile an hour fastball. And then it's been like 90, 91, 90. So yeah. So I was like, okay, well it's starting to go back up. And then I looked yesterday when I was preparing for this and it goes down another mile per hour. Like, I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not going to take that risk on a 14 game slate, um, where I think I think he might be hurt. Like it's a good chance that he's pitching with some sort of injury. Yeah, something. I mean, like you know, he was good against Milwaukee. Eight Ks, one walk. Like you know, he did give up runs, but if he's going to go eight Ks and one walk, I'll take my chances on whatever the hits end up being. Um, yeah. But six Ks, four walks in the most recent start, gave up the homer. Something's off. Well, he was, I mean, he was just, like, look at those game logs. And, like, the swinging strike rate was nuts. The first, like, six starts, he was, like, legit the best pitcher in the MLB. And I was just going to ride him until basically his arm fell off. And he was throwing, like, 60% sliders or something ridiculous. And it's showing now. He's he's probably nursing an injury or he's got a dead arm or something. And I don't want to play guys that are on a downswing of their velocity. Like four mile per hour dip is pretty crazy from one start to the next. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, they probably know more than us, though. So who knows? Uh, no Do bats. they know? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, this screams like, hey, maybe we could just skip you a start. That's exactly what I would do if I saw this. But just one, like, hey, we'll just you know, 
give you a couple extra days to like recharge the batteries and see where you come back because you're down pretty sizably here i don't know yeah so yeah it's just pitching for me i'll have a little bit of corbin because you know i don't feel great saying i would want zero of him but he's not going to have the same sort of outlook that i normally would have and Manaya is going to be uh, pretty highly owned for me, actually, at that price point. Yeah, I don't, Especially I don't if, mind like, Nick Ahmed and Chris Owings are going to be the, the right-handed bats that are running out of their shit. Might <laughs> yeah. as well get me. Yeah. I can get to Arizona by the time the game starts. For sure. All right, two more. Padres and Dodgers. Padres, three-run implied total. Dodgers, 4.3. 65% chance to win for the Dodgers. Clayton Richard going for San Diego. Ross Stripling going for the Dodgers. Uh, Ross Stripling's my favorite pitcher of the day. Um, I will max out whatever my ownership cap is on him on both sites. The only thing that will uh, change my ownership of Ross Stripling is what we project the field's ownership of Ross Stripling. Because right now, uh, I can't get enough at that price point. Yeah, I mean, he's... He's just been pretty good. He was really good in his last start. I think he was six innings, nine strikeouts. He threw 96 pitches, which is was well, super encouraging to me. So he is pretty much fully stretched out. That's what was keeping him off of, uh, or keeping me off of him in his last few starts. But 96 pitches against the Nationals, really good start. I don't think he's got like great stuff. Um, I think that was in a doubleheader game. So maybe it was a watered down Nats lineup or something. I don't remember but at home against the Padres Padres are the best matchup for a right-handed pitcher in my model um yeah 7200 big favorite like what's not to like here I, I don't think he's got a huge ceiling but 20 DK points seems pretty attainable here for 7000 7200 yeah uh the, it's just the the price point and sort of the matchup is as good as it's going to get for you. Mm -hmm. Padres lineup is uh, bad. Is probably the best way that I can describe it without being super mean. And you know, sixty seven hundred on Fanduel, seventy two hundred on DK for Stripling. Makes a lot of stuff work. I would say, mm -hmm. just guessing right now, Scherzer Stripling will be the most popular pitching combination. Does that sound right to you? Um. Man, I, I don't. I think Musgrove. Like as we're going through this, I think Musgrove's going to be pretty popular. I think it might be <clears throat> Scherzer, Musgrove. I think it might be Syndergaard, Musgrove. Um, I don't know that we're going to have to worry about too too much about ownership. Um, but I am getting worried about Musgrove as we go through this. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I didn't get too much Dodgers. Couple couple scattered lines, but. This game's all about stripling for me. Yeah. Now we save the best for last. Jake's Twins, three run implied total. Mariners, 4.2. 63% chance to win for the Mariners. Uh, Fernando Romero going for the Minnesota Jakes. James Paxton going for the Mariners. Uh, love Paxton tonight. Especially on FanDuel, where he's only 9700 uh, He's the second most expensive pitcher on DK. So I still like him quite a bit there, just because he's so much cheaper than Scherzer. But uh, Paxton's ceiling tonight on FanDuel is very, very, very appealing. I think he's the second best overall <laughs> option on FanDuel. And that looks even better when there's three guys ahead of him from a price point. So I'm going to have a ton of exposure to Paxton. Sorry to do that to you and your fellow uh, Minnesotians. Minnesotans. Minnesotan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I think Paxton is an awesome play, and he he's a really, really good tournament play. So we talked about Kluber and Syndergaard and Scherzer at length, um, and then he's priced um, pretty far away from both, like all those guys on DK. 11-9 for him, and this Twins lineup I have as one of the worst against lefties. Uh, they're they're really hard against righties, but against lefties it's a different story. Paxton, huge upside game to game. Um, he's had a no hitter. He's had a 16 strikeout game. Like he can go nuts here. Um, 
I think DK got the pricing right. I think it's Scherzer first, then Paxton, as far as upside goes tonight in tournaments. And he's going to get lost in the shuffle, I think, for ownership. Like, I think he might be under 10% on DK, and that is I hope so. really, really attractive to me. Um, I'll have twice as much as that. <clears throat> if he's at 10, I'll have 20 or more. Uh, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Because just an awkward price, he's, he's by himself. And he's not as big of a name as Scherzer. And, um, man, I think he could go nuts here. So no Twins bats for me. Um, as sad it is, as it is for me to say that, being the Twins homer that I am. Uh, and then <clears throat> Romero, like, I like him as a pitcher, but too big of a slate. I'd rather go with some safety at, for Stripling or someone else or go all the way down to Musgrove. So no Romero and then maybe Mitch Hanniger against him. But that is about it for this game. Yeah, I didn't get any Mariners bats on DK, but I did get uh, quite a few lines of them on FanDuel. Uh, they're one, two, three, four, I don't know, like seventh or eighth or something like that. So Segura, Heredia, Hanniger, Cruz, Seeger. Uh, mostly just Cruz, Seeger, and Segura with like one rotated guy around that. Not a place that I really want to be too much. I, I don't want to have too many, too many Mariners against the Minnesota Jakes, so... That's it. We're through it. Let's look at let's look at some crunches. Give me two pitchers. I can't hear you. You're on mute. Oh, here we go. All right. <laughs> let's try Musgrove and uh, one of the top. Like, just try Musgrove and Scherzer. Okay. See if that. Well, works. I only got three Musgroves, so what I'll do is. Okay. I'll run 20 extra Musgrove lines. I mean, you can get Musgrove and Scherzer with Colorado and the Rangers, if that helps you at all. So, Yeah, you can do a lot. I, I was playing around with it a little bit while we were talking. And oh, okay. You can, you can do pretty much whatever you want if you don't take Scherzer with him. Red Sox Rockies with Musgrove and Scherzer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It's going to be... It's going to be tough not to play Musgrove for me. Yeah, especially because you can very easily get to Rockies and probably whatever, especially <laughs> if you step down off of Scherzer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's wild. So I'm going to take a look at what I would assume would be my favorite pairing on DK. So that would be Syndergaard... And Stripling. So if I do Syndergaard and Stripling, Tigers Rockies would be my number one line, which is kind of nuts to me. But just oh, there it is. So Rockies Red Sox. It's the ass end of the Rockies stack with Betts, Martinez, Bogarts, and Devers. I thought it'd be a relatively low owned <laughs> stack. Well, not like low owned, but. If I had Cargo, Desmond, Castro, and Walters as the four Rockies, I would guess that would be like the lowest four combination. And then getting Betts, Martinez, Bogarts, and Devers, I think it'd be nice. I really like that lineup. I'd love to throw that in like a single entry GPP. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, you're, Musgrove just makes everything so easy. But Miner, like if you think Miner's got – a similar upside or floor or whatever, then <clears throat> might be a good idea to take a chance there. Yeah, if they have a really huge gap in ownership, um, I will have I will end up on on less Musgrove just from mm -hmm. logistics. Yeah. All right, for all you Fanduel crazies, we'll look at it quick. I don't need people pitchforks outside my house. <laughs> uh, so Paxton to me would be the guy I would want to focus on on Fanduel. So if I focus on him, um, you can go three, four, five, six for the Rockies. Arenado, Para, Story, Desmond with a raise stack. So obviously, you know I'm uh, pretty, pretty keen on the raise tonight from a mm -hmm. price perspective. So that allows you to get to some pretty fun stuff. Uh, Tigers, Mariners. Um, 
Who's the one off there? Ah, uh, yeah. So like, I like that quite a bit. Uh, Heredia, Cruz, Gordon Beckham with a Wilmer Flores one off is interesting to me. Jay Bruce is a one off. Yeah, I'm going to love Paxton tonight. It's hard not to. I mean, he's – I think he's an awesome play. Like, there's no there's no way around it. I'm with you. Uh, no hockey or anything. Uh, Rockets picked up the W last night, so they go into game six, uh, up 3-2 on the Warriors. Cavs and Celtics game six tonight, I guess. Which uh, Celtics could close the them out going back to Cleveland. That should be interesting. They won't. You're on record. Go Cleveland tonight. Yeah, I think Cleveland. Cleveland in a big way tonight. Interesting. That's what I got. Cavs <clears throat> seven point favorites tonight. Yeah. Golden State ten and a half point favorites tomorrow against the Rockets. I think that's that's too little. Honestly, I think. Cleveland and Golden State are going to smoke them in games, game six. Well, if Chris Paul can't play for <clears throat> Houston on Saturday, then, yeah, I would expect Golden State to really romp. I've got a sneaky suspicion that Boston closes out Cleveland tonight in Cleveland, and this is the last game we see LeBron playing Cleveland. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, this could set up to be another LeBron ring. I saw something on Twitter. guy made a good point. So, if Paul plays through injury game seven, then can't play next series, um, then then it'd be LeBron versus Paulless Rockets. That shit like, would be great. I, I would yeah. give anything for it. I mean, that's what you yeah. need to win titles. You need injury luck. You never yeah. know who's going to get hurt. I mean, the Thunder and probably would have had one uh, if not for injuries. Yep. When the whole band was together, um, sometimes yep. you need to get lucky. Uh, you know, Curry's knee was messed up the year the Cavs, you know, picked one off. So, I don't know. I have this weird feeling that Boston just finishes them off. They come out as a team, and Cleveland just can't get it together. That's uh, certainly the case. But it could I'm be stupid the case. because it's it's a seven point line. So if I if I'm so confident, I should bet on the money line. I can you get Boston plus 277 right now. I think I talked about this with Chris on one of the live streams. Like, if I were in Vegas, I would put 25 bucks on Boston Moneyline. And if it won, I would go get, like, a $90 steak <laughs> for dinner. But, yeah. That's what you I got did. Uh, my parents took me to Vegas right after I graduated college. And uh, it was, like, right around now. So, NBA playoffs, probably, like, two weeks ago. And... Uh, I just sat in the sports book and drank all day and bet on games and I would make one bet like that was my steak bet and if I hit I would just go get like some baller steak <laughs> so like three nights out of the week I ate like a preposterously expensive like dry aged ribeye <laughs> yeah that's uh that sounds like the life it was great sounds like you had it figured out I was like I'll, I'll happily burn 25 to 50 dollars <laughs> to just like roll the dice on this and get and ha get hammered but it was like, For sure. so it would have been 2009 NBA playoffs. I just remember betting on the Rockets. Yeah, I love that. It's, that's uh, fun. Hi, dog. Yeah, that's my <clears throat> my sister's dog. So he's a good boy. Yeah, I don't got anything else. We've been on here long enough, people. So <laughs> check out Spotlight Hitters, Pitchers, and Stacks. Um, check out WNBA projections if they're posted. Uh, Subscribe to Premium. Nights like tonight are where you really want to be a premium member because ownership projections are key. Uh, they mean a ton. So they will determine a lot of the way that my lineups end up getting constructed. I highly, highly, highly recommend a premium subscription to see sort of what we offer with regards to ownership projections and rankings. Because if you're not trying to figure out how much people are going to be owned, you're, you're a step behind. I truly do believe that. For sure. So check all that stuff out. Um, it is Friday, so we will not see you again until Monday morning. I will be back tonight for a live stream with Chris starting at 6. 
Um, but have a good Memorial Day weekend, everybody. We'll still have content out throughout the weekend, but uh, we'll be back Monday morning. Yeah, uh, I will be doing the night shift tonight for tomorrow's two slates. And uh, other than that, good luck tonight, guys. There you go. Later, everybody.